From Eyewitness News, this is Sports Wrap. Hi, we're the Johnson High School Cheerleaders. Welcome to the Friday Night High School Football Wrap. Woo! Welcome to the Week 9 edition of the Friday Night Football Wrap. Another week, another big challenge for the Division I frontrunner, Bishop Hendrickson, undefeated. And for the second straight week, trying to beat back a second-place team. Big crowd in Warwick, the Hawks hosting Portsmouth. The Pats looking for a fifth straight win. 14-13 game in the fourth. Fourth down for the Patriots, but their drive stopped at midfield by Mike Lift. That gave Hendrick and the ball back, and they grind it out from there. Mike Maloof, fourth and one, able to convert, diving behind the offensive line. Then the next play would seal the victory. Maloof to Ryan Brannigan. First down, time runs out on Portsmouth. Hendrick is still perfect on the season. 14-13, the final score. Barrington Eagles visiting the Rebels of South Kingstown. Fast forward to the third. South Kingstown, Sean Connolly and Ryan Smith fighting their way through to get the sack, but it was all Barrington in the fourth quarter. Alex Spies toting the rock, breaks a couple tackles. Nice 13-yard run later on in the fourth. It seems like every week we mention this guy, Vinny San Angelo, takes it in from eight yards out. Eagles go on to win it 31-0. to zero. East Providence stepping out of league play, inviting Attleboro to Pierce Stadium. A ton of big plays in this one. Second quarter, game tied at seven. Attleboro QB Nate Robitaille rolls out, throws back over the middle. Brandon Moody, big number 90, rumbles into the end zone. Extra point missed, 13-7. Attleboro, Bombardier's defense, then goes to work. The pass tipped, ball picked off by Robitaille. A great play, takes it back to the 50-yard line. Townie's defense would hold back on offense. Brendan Quigley comes into your view and is gone 30 yards to the house. EP takes a one-point lead with the extra point. Now Atterborough's turn to answer. The give to Malik Clark down the sideline. The little hurdle, big gain down to the 10-yard line. That drive capped off by Robitaille. Rolls out again, stops jumps and reaches for the goal line Attleboro with a hard fought road victory 29-21 the final score the Cranston East fans feeling the Halloween spirit bolts hosting North Kingstown East driving early but the skippers defense comes up big Jason Richards and James Chamberlain combine to stop the drive on fourth down but East defense stepping up as well Joe Bossom and I the huge hit on the quarterback, that sack would help set up this. Robert Reardon calls his own number, and he's into the end zone. France Denise blows by the Skippers, 34-12, the final score. Well, we're just getting things started here on the Friday Night Football Wrap. Hi, we're the Hedgekin Hawks cheerleaders. Stick around for more Friday Night High School Football Wrap. The Division II playoff picture starting to take form. After tonight, we'll check in on that scene and then head to the best from Divisions 3 and 4. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Week 9. Remember, you can rewatch all of tonight's action on our website, WPRI.com. Most of the games will be up tonight. Every contest will be posted by tomorrow morning. Again, just visit our website, WPRI.com. Warwick Vets cheerleaders putting on their halftime show. Their team looking for a big home win. Hosting Shea down 7 0. The defense answers. TJ Boyajan causes the fumble, and John Leonard there for the recovery. But the Raiders' D was tough as well. That's at the goal line. Shady not breaking. Ellis Smith, Jerry Samito, and Porfirio Biaz. The denial right there. Then on fourth and goal, Adam Okenbanjo chases the QB and forces the throw. Raiders keep their playoff hopes alive with a 13 0 shutout of the Canes. To the shadows of McCoy Stadium, the Tillman Tigers. Hosting Ponagansett, first quarter, Tigers on the move. Quarterback Joselito Knapp gets to the outside, then cuts it back in, weaving through Chieftain's defense, 20-yard gain. Coleman in business later on the drive from the five-yard line. The fumble on the exchange goes right to Will Gerard. He rumbles up the sideline, takes it back to the 40. The Tolman's D would hold on. Juan Wilson on the Strip here, Ponagansett recovers, but they're forced to punt Tolman with the ball and on the move again, Knapp. Airs it out to Shane Taylor, 30-yard pass and catch. This drive capped off by Knapp on the naked bootleg, finds the end zone. Tolman improves to 7-2 on the year, 26-10, the final score. 
It's now time to check in with the second member of our crew, Sarah Hogan. She has highlights with the other Division 2A team, Johnston, trying to keep pace atop the league standing. Sarah? Well, Eric, not only was it a festive night in Johnson because of the Halloween weekend coming up, but it was also homecoming weekend, so fans packed the stands and were ready for some football. Johnson fans celebrating homecoming night, as I just mentioned. Panthers looking to stay atop Division Two as they played host to Westerly, pick up the action in the fourth quarter. Score tied at 14. Panthers on the attack. David Bubar looking downfield and into the end zone. Tyler Haley all alone, but... Unable to handle the ball in the drive ends there. Bulldogs take over. Less than two to go in the game. Score is still tied. Hand off to Frank Alviana. Frank, the little engine that could, chugs his way 20 yards into the end zone for the go-ahead Westerly touchdown. 21-14 Westerly. Time winding down in this one. Panthers going for the big play. Bubar goes to Chris Pistachio. Chris breaks a couple tackles. Looks like he's on his merry way, but the ball gets knocked loose. And Spencer Reed falls on it. Ball game over. Westerly with the big upset on the road. 21-14 the final. Next up, another Division II showdown between Central and Cumberland. Second quarter. Knights looking to cap here, second and goal handoff to Mike Washington, and like a bullet, Mike blasts through into the end zone for the score. Seven nothing Central leads it, but those Clippers with the tricky play coming up here, fourth down, looking like they're going to punt the great acting skills by Ben Elliott, who is off to the races. He gains the first down and then some to set up the scoring play right here. This time, Clippers go with the run. Thomas Carroll gets the job done and puts the Clippers on board, seven to six. But the Knights go on to win it under the lights. 1960 final. Next up, we travel to North Smithfield, where the Northmen play host to North Providence on homecoming night. Second quarter, Northmen looking to get on the board. Third and goal, and Alex Blanchett capitalizes, punches through for the first Northman touchdown of the game, but home team looking to do some more damage and opt for the two-point conversion, which also gets across the line. They lead it 8-0, but right before the half, the Cougars would pounce. Wildcat play here. Anthony Robio throws downfield to Justin DiGiulio, 20 yards. Justin hangs on for the TD, but the Northmen get the last lap on homecoming night. They win 14-6. Eric, back to you.